Next, let's talk about nested aggregations, which lets you break things down in more than one dimension. So you can do an aggregation and then do aggregations on those aggregated buckets on top of it all. That opens up some pretty powerful possibilities for you. So for this example, we're going to compute the average rating for each Star Wars movie in our movies database. So we're gonna have a nested aggregation. First, we're going to have a query that actually looks for everything that has Star Wars as a phrase, and then we will aggregate all the individual Star Wars titles. And within each of those buckets, we will compute the average ratings. So let's do this as a little activity. And uh, this is going to be an activity where things intentionally go horribly wrong. There are a lot of little gotchas when you're aggregating on text fields and this will be an opportunity to like let you see what can happen there and how to deal with it properly and how not to deal with it. So we'll have a little bit of a story here. Just for reference, if it's just so you have this in the slides here for future use, here is the final query that we're going to end up with. And uh, as you can see, we're going to be going back to the idea of having a raw version of the title field. And uh, remember, we need to index that in a particular way. You have to have a mapping in place to do that. And we'll walk you through that right now. So let's dive in and start our little saga of trying to figure out the average rating of each Star Wars film. Alrighty, let's go through an example of doing more complex nested aggregations. And actually the term sub-aggregation is more preferred these days. Nested aggregations are sometimes confused with the concept of searching nested documents, which is a totally different beast. But whatever you want to call it, it's the idea of putting aggregations inside of aggregations. So let's dive in with an example here. Again, what we're going to try to do is do a query of all the Star Wars films and break down the average rating for each individual Star Wars film. And we're going to do this with a nested or sub-aggregation. So if I were going to do this, I would probably do something like this. curl-xget 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash ratings index. And we're searching, searching the rating data type because we're trying to compute average ratings, remember? Fortunately, all the movie titles were already denormalized for us and are part of that index. Underscore search. Question mark size equals zero because all we care about are the aggregations. I want pretty format coming back and we will use the following request body. So we will start off as before issuing a query for ratings that are for movies that include the term Star Wars in their title. So we'll do a match underscore phrase query where the title contains the phrase Star Wars. All right, and then we will put some aggregations in this, in this query as well, just like we've done before. And we will name this aggregation titles. All right, so we will start by doing a terms aggregation on the title field. Now here's where things get interesting. In addition to doing a document count for every rating for a movie that has Star Wars in the title, I can also do a sub-aggregation on top of that. So here we go. We're going to do an AGS inside this other AGS block. And we will call this sub-aggregation, or nested aggregation, average underscore rating. And it will compute an average aggregation based on the field rating. All right, so now we just have to close everything out. Now, conceptually, this is the right idea. Okay, now we have what, let's walk through this one last time. So we start with a query that narrows all of our ratings down to ratings for movies that have Star Wars in the title. And then we aggregate together all the individual values of Star Wars titles that exist. And then for each individual Star Wars movie title, we compute the average rating across all the ratings for that particular movie. Here's a very simple example of a nested aggregation or a sub-aggregation. However, something's going to go horribly wrong. Oh, field data, what's it talking about here? So it's complaining about not being able to deal with text fields without field data being set first. Now, we talked about this before in a different example. If you're trying to actually do queries or aggregating or treating titles or text fields as you know individual entities, that's not gonna work because our inverted index that we use for the search index only contains individual search terms within that title. The title itself does not really exist as its own entity. Now, setting up field data 
is one way of doing that. That enables Elasticsearch to keep sort of a separate record around of the actual value of that field. So let's just try and do what it tells us to do and see if that works. I'm not making any promises about whether it will do what you want, but um, let's go ahead and follow its advice in the reason field for the error and go ahead and enable field data for the title field. Let's go ahead and do that. So we can do that thusly. Fortunately, this is something you can do without re-indexing your data. curl x put 127.0.0.1 slash ratings underscore mapping. And we're going to remap the rating data type. And I want pretty output. And we will specify the following request body. We are going to specify properties for the rating type, specifically for the title field. And we will keep this as a type of text, but we will also specify field data, data being true. Okay, so I'm doing what it told me to do, right? Bang. All right, so that worked. It acknowledged it. Seems like we're good. So let's try and run that query again and see if it works. Just hit uh, the up arrow a couple of times to bring back that previous query. Hey, we got some results, but what's going on here? Oh, so okay, it worked, but it actually gave me results for each individual search term. So for example, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope got broken up into results for A and Hope and Four and everything else. And well, it sort of worked, but eh, not really. Um, 1977, Hope 4, you know, it's giving me the same results for each individual term that occurred in Star Wars Episode 4, but things get kind of weird when you're dealing with, you know, words like A. Well, I guess that is only occurring in a single movie, but not exactly what I had in mind. So even though it worked, you know, we followed the advice and that gave us results, it's still not what we wanted to do. What we have to do is go back to that earlier example where we had a similar problem and actually re-index things such that we keep a copy of the raw title without being broken up into search terms around so we can query that title as a whole. And by doing that, we can actually do aggregations on the title as a whole. So if you need to do an aggregation on a text field, you need to keep a raw version of that text field in your index somehow. So again, this is an example of where you need to think ahead because if you discover you need to do something like this later on, it means re-indexing your data, which can be a real pain in the butt. So let's just bite the bullet and go ahead and re-index this puppy. Let's start by deleting, oh, deleting the entire ratings index. Curl-x delete. Obviously in production, you would wanna be a lot more careful about what you're doing here, because this means your database is going bye-bye until you re-index it. Oh, this pains me. All right, it's gone. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do, fortunately, we have a script that we wrote earlier to actually re-index the ratings for us. We just need to modify that a little bit. And uh, that's vi index ratings.py was a script that we downloaded earlier. All I'm going to do here is comment out the line that actually deletes that index before it populates the new one. So I'm going to hit the I key to enter insert mode and hit a hash sign to comment that line out. Okay. Uh, that way, when I re-index this stuff, it won't blow away the index that I already created. And we can hit escape colon WQ. All right, so now we are, we are set to create a new mapping that actually gets that raw data around. So to do that, we'll do something like this, curl dash X put 127.0.0.1 colon 9200 slash ratings slash D. All right, so we're gonna set up a mappings for the rating data type. Uh, as before, we will disable the all field. And we will set up the following properties for the rating type. All we really care about is the title field. If we're doing something special for our purposes here. And we will keep that as a type string. We will, as before, set the field data to true. And now we will set up our extra field for the raw data. We will set up a new raw subfield here of the title field that is defined as follows. It too will be of type string. 
and the key is that it will be not analyzed. We specify that with index not underscore analyzed. All right, so what this is doing is actually creating, again, a raw version of the title string that does not get broken up into individual search terms, and that enables us to aggregate on that text field as a whole instead of on its individual search terms, which is what we want for this particular query. Now I just need to close everything out. Whoops. Tabs are kind of a pain to type in here. If you've, uh, in case you forgot, the way to actually enter tabs here is to do control V and then the tab character which is very easy to get wrong. Almost there. All right, let's see if this takes. All right, cool. So now we have our mapping in place to get that raw version of the title field so we can actually aggregate on it. Let's go ahead and run our script to re-import that data, re-index it. Python 3 index ratings.py. And that completed. Let's make sure that there's something in there. Let's do a, let's view that mapping just to double check it. 127.0.0.1.9200 ratings underscore mapping. That query will give us back the copy of the mapping for the ratings index. All right, let's make sure that that raw field is there. It is. Okay, cool. So let's try that one more time. Let's uh, hit the up arrow until we get back to that original query that we tried to do. And all we need to change here is say that instead of doing a term aggregation on title, we're going to change that to title.raw because that will aggregate on the actual complete title and not on individual terms of the title. And now, finally, we should get some results. That's more like it. Huh, there's some uh, titles in here I never even knew about. What's Empire of Dreams, a story? Some little documentary thing, apparently, that only had one rating, probably, of a 4.0 4 stars. Oh, people didn't like the Clone Wars. I think the Clone Wars are kind of cool. Uh, so this is interesting, right? We can, uh, <laughs> this is kind of cool. Okay, so Star Wars Episode Four had an average rating of 4.2. Episode Five, 4.23, a little bit higher than Episode Four, but more or less the same. And uh, things start going downhill. I think people don't really like uh, having... Ewoks in their Star Wars that went down to a 4.0 for episode 6 and as any Star Wars fan will tell you the uh, rebooted episodes 1 through 3 were not exactly warmly received by some of the uh, diehard hard fans and this data reflects that so this is interesting stuff okay so we finally got some results let me put that result that uh, query up one more time here so you can study it one more time so just to recap we have done a query here to actually match the phrase Star Wars. We then aggregated that down to bucket it based on individual titles. And we used a title.raw field to actually be able to do that aggregation on a text field after re-indexing our data to have that. And then we had a sub-aggregation that allowed us to compute the average rating for each individual title in each title bucket. Whew. All right, so there you have it. Nested aggregations or sub-aggregations that's about as complicated as it gets, but as you can see, it is very flexible and very powerful for doing more complex queries on your structured data. We've seen how Elasticsearch handles aggregations at a low level using REST queries. That's an important underpinning to have, but in the real world, you probably won't need to work at such a low level. In the next section, we'll look at an important part of the Elastic stack called Kibana, which lets you analyze and visualize the data into your index without writing queries at all. This is where it starts to get fun, so keep going. See you in the next section.